Welcome to the Dr. Moxmo Q&A, the third and final part of my 300 subscriber special. And if that sounded horribly professional and scripted, I'm sorry. I am so bad at introductions and being off script. I'm such a bad improviser, so forgive me if this little intro here is all over the place. I can never get my thoughts like, you know, in a linear fashion, they're always flying by the seat of my pants. Alrighty, so Q&A. Um, wow, I'm just looking over the questions we have here. There are actually a lot, and I hope I got them all because it actually got really hard to organize because I got so many, so if I forget to do yours or I missed it, feel free to yell at me in the comments. I'll probably answer again after I cry because I would feel really bad if I missed one. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, I'm just going to try and keep this video as low-key as possible. I want it to be real and a fun time, so... This is something you should have a drink with or play a video game to. Or, if you actually want to watch the video, you can now! Because my wonderful artist, the great and powerful Amethyst, bless her heart, has once again helped me so much with this video and made it a hundred times better than I originally planned by making some background images for your enjoyment! If you don't know who she is, she's been my artist for a long time now. She's done a lot of the art you see on my channel, primarily my profile picture, and pretty much all the custom-made art you saw during my Halloween special last year, and also this year. And guess what? She's opening up a DeviantArt, and it would mean the world to me if you went over to it and followed her, subscribed, watched, stalked, I don't know what you do on DeviantArt. <laughs> I don't use the website, but... You know, go support her as much as she has supported me. It would really mean a lot. And she's amazing and she deserves more credit than I can give her. Okay, I think with that we can actually begin here. I'm actually going to have a sip of coffee so I can wake up a little bit. Um, yeah, it's uh, 6.30 in the morning right now and I work in three hours. And I have to get this recording ton because this is the only amount of free time I'm going to have. Okay. First set of questions. These were the aforementioned ones from the previous video I made where I said I collected questions throughout my career. So I don't know who to shout out here. Um, some of these, I don't even know where they came from. I just kind of wrote them down here and there and I put them on sticky notes on my door, but they're still actually kind of interesting and I really wanted to cover them. So the first one is, how long have you done YouTube for? Um. Well, my first YouTube video was posted on, I can't remember the date, but I know it was April of 2014. But I try and ignore that first year of YouTube for me because I really didn't take it serious until like October of 2015, actually. Yeah, there. Um, beforehand, I was just posting like these videos like here and there whenever it convenient to me, which is like one video every like two months so it was such a lazy attempt that I can't even consider it so in all technicality two years but honestly and truly one year have you ever considered opening a patreon kickstarter gofundme etc oh that is a really tough question um it's not that I haven't thought about it but I don't think that now is the time. Um, it's like one thing to ask somebody, you know, to subscribe, like, share your video with their friends or on their social media. But to go out of your way and ask people to give you their hard-earned money? Um, that seems a little too much for me. Like, yeah, I would make sure the money went to the YouTube channel and every penny of it would go to help making my content better, but I just don't think I'm in any position to ask for money yet, and it wouldn't weigh good on my conscience if- my conscience- on my conscience if I did ask for money. At this point, it's a big fat no. But if, you know, if I feel like my channel's progress is only being halted by financial restrictions alone, then maybe I'll think about it. But until then, no. What YouTube channels do you watch? 
You know what? There are quite a lot I watch religiously. I actually watch a lot of YouTube. I'm primarily a gamer, so I watch a lot of gaming content. Primarily, like, reviews, so things from Normal Boots, so that would be Peanut Butter Gamer, JonTron, and Progerid, as well as Gerard. The Hidden Block, for sure. We got Cat Icarus, Brutal Moose, and Space Hamster. I also do watch Angry Joe for his reviews, both movie and gaming. I know some people aren't too happy with the movie reviews, but hey, I think he's got some pretty valid points at the end of the day. And I also watch, whenever he posts, Vaddy Vidia. His videos are like art, like fine art meets gaming. It's one thing to cover Dark Souls and Bloodborne content, but when you take that game, but then tell a story while you're at it, that's a talent. That is a gift. And just watching one of his videos, I don't want to explain too much because I want you to actually go check him out and see for yourself. When you see how much attention to the small details he has, how he goes about it with his music, his editing, and how he tones his voice while explaining all the information he has, it really feels like he's trying to tell a story and broaden the already thick lore that that game series is known for. And yeah, I know I'm venting pretty hard right now, but I'm a fanboy at the end of the day. There's some people who actually ask me if I know these people because I do YouTube, and that answer is no. I'm still a big dork at the end of the day who loves these people. Um, I'm trying to think of like another channel. Um, oh yeah, Indie Nidell's The Great War series. I'm a pretty big history buff, especially for World War One. so his channel covers everything that's been going on in World War One, day to the day, a hundred years ago from today. His channel started in, I think, don't quote me, jeez, now I'm on pressure to show that I actually like history, July of 2014, because in July of 1914, World War One started to go into effect. So, if you do want to check it out, you got some things to go through because Currently, we're in October of 1916, and a lot has happened in the past two years, but I promise you, it will be worth your time. Will you ever post another Fire Emblem creepypasta? Also, who did you marry in Fates, All Roots, and Awakening? Now, I saw this question PM to me from my Tharja video, I think. Um, I actually wanted to cover it because the Tharja video is one of my most popular ones, and I think some people would be curious. Yes, I would be totally happy to do another Fire Emblem related creepypasta, just they're hard to find. I was actually trying really hard to post one when Fates came out because it actually came out on a Friday, which is the usual scheduled day I post videos, but I couldn't find anything that was like fitting for my channel and that was really upsetting. But if you like wrote one or you know of one, send them to me because I actually really want to do another one. And as for the second part of your question, uh, for Conquest, uh, I actually get a lot of shit for this. Um, I actually married Valoria for multiple reasons, but I really won't get into why I married these characters because that's not what this video is about now, is it? Um, Birthright, I married Scarlet. Revelation, I went back to Valoria. And in Awakening, yeah, I was trying to think about the title. <laughs> Awakening, I married Sumia. What are some of your favorite video games? Yikes. This is going to be a long list. I'm going to just fire out. Uh, first one that comes to mind is Pokemon because I think all of you kind of figured that out. I think my channel is mostly associated with Pokemon and Creepypasta. I'm the Creepypasta narrator who loves Pokemon. <laughs> That's just who I am. Legend of Zelda is one of my classic favorites. I play a lot of shooters. Uh, my primary one is Battlefield. That one is probably the one I play the most. I used to be a pretty hardcore Call of Duty fan, admittedly, but not so much anymore. The later entries have kind of chased me off, and I don't know if I can come back after, you know, what I experienced in Ghosts and now with Infinite Warfare around the corner. <laughs> I love the Tales of games, uh, especially Tales... Oops, excuse me. <laughs> it's the coffee, man. Tales of Zelia. Uh, I'm trying to think of more... 
See, now you put me on the spot, so now I'm never gonna guess. Oh, Dark Souls, yeah, we were talking about that. Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Metal Gear Solid. There, you know what, there's so much. Halo, okay, Harvest Moon. I actually really like Harvest Moon. Even though it's like really kiddy and kind of boring to a lot of people, but I still like them. That game is sort of my guilty pleasure, but I think I'm gonna have to stop this question because if you just leave me to thinking, I'm gonna keep going on and on and on. Kingdom Under Fire! Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. What games are you looking forward to that are coming out in the near future? Ooh. We actually got a lot coming out. I think my primary ones that are on my list are Pokemon Sun and Moon. Not for the sake that I'm overly excited about them, but I always play the new Pokemon generation. That's just something I do. Uh, I'm not too keen on the whole Hawaiian theme. I, it's just something, it's an aesthetic that's not really for me, but I'm still gonna enjoy it because it still looks like a fun game at the end of the day. Battlefield 1, totally. I played so many hours in that beta and I have no idea why because anything I did there is not gonna go over to my full version of the copy, so whatever. But like I said, I'm a huge Battlefield fan and a World War One enthusiast, so when you combine the two things that I like, of course I'm gonna like your game. Final Fantasy XV looks interesting, but the question is, will it ever release? It keeps getting pushed back and back and back, so I'm pretty sure that game's in, like, in limbo forever. At E3, there was this one game I was looking at, and it was called Death Stranding? Stranding Dead? I'm not 100% certain, but that is Hideo Kojima's new game after being booted out from Konami. And I'm not really excited about it because we really got nothing about it, but I'm interested. That trailer was so like out there and asked so many questions that I can't help but be interested. There was like that big, weird, like sandy beach wasteland kind of place. There was a naked Norman Reedus, a ghost baby, things floating in the sky. I was like, Mr. Kojima, where are you taking me? <laughs> so uh, I'm a little bit, you know, like excited to see what he has up his sleeve, but I'm not really excited for the game just yet. Hopefully my answer can change. The game I'm probably the most excited for is not one that's like produced by a giant company, but rather a, you know, small team of independent writers and artists, which is called Pokemon Visual Academy. I didn't mention that in my last question, but I'm a huge fan of visual novels at the end of the day. I absolutely love covering like those stories because I like reading and everything and having like the visual novel. It's kind of like reading a picture book once again, like what I used to do in my childhood. Anyway, this one is actually like you're going to a college that is for Pokemon trainers. And I know it kind of sounds a little bit bland and boring, but as a student myself and as a Pokemon fan, it feels kind of relatable and it's really enjoyable. And probably the best part for me is that if they keep all of their promises that they're offering on their website, this could actually be the most in-depth and wide visual novel on the market. Don't take my word for it actually. If you like look up their website, I think it's just Pokemon Visual Academy. You can actually download a demo. So don't take my word for it. Go play it for yourself and you can go see. And I know that sounded a little bit sponsored, but nope, I'm not sponsored. I'm just a fan of the game and I'm really passionate about it and I can't wait for it to come out. And yeah, that no, that finishes up all the other questions, the ones that I didn't know who asked the, the questions, the ones I collected, but now is the good part, the part where I can talk about your questions that you submitted to me and give out some shout outs. So make sure you go check out all these people because they were really kind to ask a question. Our first question of the day comes from YouTube user Your Perfect Nightmare, and she asks, what is the biggest way doing YouTube has impacted your life? Did you expect this impact when you first started? The biggest way YouTube probably hit me is it taught me discipline. It taught me independence. It taught me how to manage my timetable better. YouTube at the end of the day is just a hobby for me and a hobby I do take quite serious, but it takes time. It takes a lot of work. So I can easily just skip out on making a video twice a week, 
but I don't. It really taught me how to manage my time, get jobs done, and ever since then I've noticed I've become quite a better worker like not only in YouTube but in school and at work in general I can multitask a lot more and get more done. It's also helped me with my, excuse me, sorry, coffee, it's early in the morning, forgive me. It's really helped me with self-confidence and that's something I lack in. Whenever somebody, you know, says to me, oh wow, this is a really good video, this was really good, you're a really good narrator, I love your voice, I of course say like, nah, you're just crazy, I'm not that good, I suck. But like, on the inside, it feels really nice, so it's nice to have my like confidence kind of boosted because it's always been dragged so low by me and my own insecurities <laughs> and as for the second part of your question no I didn't expect anything out of YouTube when I first started I don't know if anyone expects anything like when they first start either well maybe there's some people but me on the other hand no there was nothing I expected out of YouTube I thought it was just gonna be something that came and went like the wind but no I think it's gone for the better actually and I'm hoping we can do more Twitter user Theodore Keeler writes, Who inspired you to get into narrating horror stories? If we are talking just horror stories in general, I would say the narrators I first started listening to when I first got into Creepypasta. So that would be Mr. Creepypasta, Creepspectpasta, Creepypasta Jr., and Some Ordinary Gamers, or better known as Mudahar. But if we're talking about story telling in general, that would probably be Stuart McLean of the Vinyl Cafe. There was one time when I was watching one of his performances, and for those who don't know, he's a storyteller. He stands on stage with a book on his hand, and he tells multiple stories, not just scary stories, but more like day-to-day -day stories, comedy. He's actually a pretty funny dude. Um, th that was the first time I saw him perform. I looked at him and I went, I want to do that. But... I always knew I wanted to tell stories, but those were the people who kind of told me that this is something you can do. It's not just a make-believe fantasy. People will like this. People want to see this, so why not do it yourself? And really, I can only thank them for that, even though I've never met them. YouTube user Jeeps Creeps asks, do you have a fetish? I cannot believe you asked me that question. Look, this video is already past the 17 minute mark. This video will be five hours long if I get into that. Freaky Faith Reads asks, why do you narrate? I narrate because I like telling stories. <laughs> like I said in that previous question, um, I always knew I wanted to tell stories, but I didn't know like you could do it to the degree that you see people now. When I was a little kid, I would actually write stories about video games, and some neighborhood kids kind of caught on, and they actually sat at a picnic table, and I would stand on top of it, and I would just read my stories, and admittedly they were shit, but they kind of liked them. A few times, actually, I would invite them over to my house, and I would take my Nintendo 64, and I would put in certain video games for their music, and I would narrate stories that I wrote with the music from the video game. <laughs> like, if I was telling a scary story, I would take Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and walk into the Shadow Temple and use that theme and then tell my scary story, so <laughs> it kind of feels like, this is something I needed to do, this is something I needed to be. My, how times change. Uh, she also asks, who are some of your favorite narrators? Uh, my favorite narrators, well, I already talked about MCP, Creeps, uh, Junior, Sog. Oh, crap, I, when I say this, I hope I don't offend anybody, like if I forget them. There's so many people I listen to when I want to support them, primarily my friends now. I don't really listen to Creepypasta as much as I used to for, you know, a hobby. I'm more doing it for to show support. Um, I guess some, maybe rather than saying who are my favorite narrators, how about checking out the following people? Let's, let's make it a bigger shout out. So I think you should check out Your Perfect Nightmare, The Shadow Reader, Rainer Lewington actually just started narrating, Celestial Noor, Dark Pasta, Cryptic Pasta, Dr. Creepin' Van Dam Pasta, 
Yeah, I'm firing off a lot of names because those those are all the people. Uh, I'm trying to think about other people who I should shout out. You know what? Just leave it with me, but check out all those people because they are great narrators and some of them I don't understand why they don't have more subs. I don't. I don't understand why they don't have as many views. You're missing out on such great talent. And her final question is, do you prefer bigger or smaller narrators? Uh... By bigger or smaller, I'm assuming you mean subscriber count. I'm going to have to reword your question a little bit because your sub count doesn't make me like you. You can have two subscribers or 2,000 or 200,000 and that's still not going to affect how much I like you. I like narrators not for their numbers but for their voice, their talents, their acting. So I'm going to kind of change your question around to, do you prefer narrators who are smaller in regards to experience, like they're just starting, compared to more professional narrators with more experience? And to answer that honestly, I like newer narrators, and not just narrators, but YouTubers in general. I like seeing like the choppy editing skills, the lower quality mic, there's a charm to it that I like. And I'm not saying that to be an asshole, like, I know when I was listening to Creeps McPasta and Mr. Creepypasta the most, that was back when they had, like, you know, not the best of mics, they were just using the static image rather than just doing, like, actual editing or video effects, but they had a charm that I just liked, it made me feel a little excited inside, but now that they are larger and have more experience, I'm very excited for them to see where their projects will go. Like, I'm not saying like, Ooh, the old Mr. Creepypasta was better. Because no, everyone deserves the chance to grow and broaden their horizons, and I'm very happy for them. But I just like that home feeling you these people used to have. And I try to preserve that in my content because that's what I like and that's my style. So like it or hate it, is it the best idea? Probably not, but hey, that's what I find fun. The X Chemical writes, where did the name Dr. Moxmo come from? Okay, now, this is a question that I wish had a better answer. It just sort of came to me, you know, this spontaneous... I knew when I was trying to make a username, and this was back when I got my PlayStation 3 and I was making a PSN account, I wanted it to have doctor in it because at the time I wanted to go through med school, I wanted to be a doctor when I grew up, so I wanted to have doctor in it, but then where Moxmo came from, I don't know. It's just like, it came down from heaven and smacked me and then it just sort of stuck. And also, crap, I've been so bad on these shoutouts. Uh, you can check him out on YouTube, link in the description. Freaky Faith Reads, same thing, link in the description. And Theodore Keeler, he's a Twitter user, link in the description. Damn, they're caught up. Rainer Lewington asks, How did you become so fabulous? The same way anyone else can become fabulous. You gotta look at yourself in the mirror, and you gotta go, Girl, you killing it tonight, queen! Go slay the knight! That's it. You just gotta make yourself feel good. And also, spread joy to others. Maybe throw glitter around wherever you walk. Dress in pink. Scream. I don't know. Just do what fabulous people do and you'll become fabulous. But I guarantee you that half of you are already fabulous and you never even know it. He also asks, what kind of drinks do you like to have on a Saturday night? Um, I don't really drink alcohol. I have a little bit of a fear of it just because of personal reasons. But I have like an occasional like glass of wine here and there on special occasions and I sometimes swipe a sip from my mom's but my primary drink of choice is coffee <laughs> perfect I just I love coffee I have a pretty bad at caffeine addiction so I usually drink a lot of coffee that's my thing on a Saturday night because usually I don't work on Sundays so I can drink a lot of coffee and not worry about falling asleep that night oh this, this is actually I'm just kind of looking um the Beige Neon reporter from Tumblr asks, How much coffee do you drink in a damn day? I didn't realize that. That's actually perfect. Um, well, on the days that I'm working, it's usually three to four. 
I have two in the morning when I wake up, like this one I have right here is number two in the morning. A third one when I like have a morning break at work and then one in the afternoon to get me through the evening. And on days that I am usually like I'm off the next day or I don't have to worry about going to sleep, I have three in the morning, one in the afternoon, one on my way home from work, and then one in the middle of the evening, so about six. <laughs> I got a problem, guys. The Shadow Reader asks, How do you prepare yourself for a role in a creepypasta? Your acting is always near perfect, and it would be interesting to know how you got yourself in the character. Aw, that's really sweet. Um, admittedly, yeah, I do take quite a theatrical approach to my narrations, but I do nothing special. If you've taken acting classes, like in high school, middle school, you were in an acting club after school, or an acting club through your city, I just do the same things that though they do, and I know this sounds a little bit like stuck up, like, Ooh, I'm an actor, I can get in the character and perform characters who I'm not. But, no, um, what I usually do is I read the story in my head, I read the story out loud, and then when it comes to characters, I try multiple voices. I convey different voices that I think this character has that's still within my range. And then I try different amounts of pausing and exaggerating certain words. So like if I was to read your question, I if I was to do it like in a character, I'd say, how do you prepare yourself for a role in a creepypasta? Your acting is always near perfect. And it would be interesting to know how you got yourself into character. Like, just things like that, and then read it again. Like, how do you prepare yourself for a role in a creepypasta? Your acting is almost near perfect, and it would be interesting to know how you got yourself in the character. Just trying to read the same line over and over and over again with different voices, pronunciations. You can make any line, even though it's the same amount of wording, you can always make it sound different. So, just try that. Just read lines over and over and over again, and see what the best thing that comes out of it. He also asks, what is the first creepypasta you remember reading and listening to? The first creepypasta I read was Ben Drowned. And should I tell the story? Oh no. Oh crap, this video is almost half an hour long. Jeez. Okay, I'm not gonna tell the story of that, but um, yeah, the first one I read was Ben Drowned, and the first one I listened to was Mr. Creepypasta, and it was either Jeff the Killer, like a sequel, like one with the Asylum in it, or another story called Laughter. I think it was the Jeff the Killer one, but don't quote me. And I remember those ones quite vividly. What is your favorite movie of all time? Ugh, too hard, man. Too hard. Um, I have a very, like, wide amount of movies that I enjoy. I have... I'm just looking on my shelf right now to see, like, which ones... I love Star Wars, I love Lord of the Rings, Saving Private Ryan, Flyboys, so many good movies. I like wartime movies, I like fantasy epics like Lord of the Rings or The, the Chronicles of Narnia. I like the first one, the other ones I don't like too much. Uh, Sci-fi movies like we have, we have like Aliens, James Cameron's Aliens. I liked, I did like Titanic quite a bit, but nah, I can go on forever about this topic too, I should actually move on. His final question is, if I have two biscuits and one has sesame seeds, why on earth does someone ruin one of my biscuits? Well, I can answer that question in the same way of how I feel about raisins in cinnamon buns. It was the devil himself taking such a delectable, delicious piece of pastry and ruining it by putting the godforsaken dried up testicles of grapes in my food. Sorry, I didn't know I was that passionate. I have another question. Who at? I have a blank question here, but it's kind of interesting. Um, oh, this was from Rainer Lewington again. Sorry, I don't know why. I doubled up on you. He asks, what is the most recent horror story that you read that comes to mind? I heard one, but... You know, yeah, I'll tell this one, because it's not one I read, it was actually one I was told by, guess what, someone I know, actually, because it happened to them. Uh, long story short, my mom has a friend who 
it's about her same age, like around, I think she's like 56, and she got divorced about 30 years ago, and she's trying to find another man, you know, the normal thing. And quite recently, she just met a new guy who seemed very sweet, he was well kept, he had a good job, and also, like, he, he cared about her. And I know any of you who know how creepy pastas go, you're probably rolling your eyes, but hear me out, this actually gets kind of freaky. Um, it actually got to the point where, on, like, on their fourth date, the guy invited her to his house for dinner, which is, you know, it's like, it's sweet, that's a good fourth date thing, like, come over to my house for some dinner, which is great. But, girl, when she walked into his house, she looked around, and all over his walls were framed, blown up pictures of her Facebook photos. And like over the fireplace on the mantle was this giant like picture of like her profile picture from Facebook. And in the hallways there was pictures of her children and their Facebook photos. And it's so creepy. And she like texted my mom going like, ah, uh, is this normal? And no, the answer to that is run to the flippin' hills, girl. Run to the flippin' hills. Twitter user Derp asks, Do you like cats? I love cats! But only the internet ones. Brad Smith asks, What are your hobbies outside of this channel? You know what? I'm a pretty basic, low-maintenance kind of guy. As you hear, I'm a pretty big gamer. I like... I'm, I'm a weeb. Yep, I like watching anime. I love reading manga. I love reading novels. Novels. Um, I have this little thing that I do with a friend where we watch really bad movies and then we read the hell out of them and we review them. And yeah, that's kind of like a hobby for me. I like criticizing things that people just wanted to entertain me for. And I don't care. If you're going to put something out there, get ready for me to critique it. Trying to think of other things. Oh, um, if you guys follow me on Twitter, I guess you know that I play music because I'm actually in an orchestra. So I actually play music in my spare time. I play stand-up bass. I play violin. And I've been actually trying to learn the saxophone, but that hasn't been going too well. Do you like sports? Favorite teams if you do. Um, I used to play basketball uh, when I was in elementary school and the beginning part of high school, but I dropped out of that. And I also like hockey because you know that's a canadian thing um primarily during the playoff seasons i don't really watch like just general stuff but once the playoffs get on i pick a team and i root for, through them like throughout the whole way and i never turned down boxing because i actually used to be in boxing but again that's something i had to drop out of as for favorite teams because steve nash you know like had his name like branded to all of our you know jerseys and uniforms and funded our project i always felt like this bias towards the teams he played on to like Toronto Raptors, Miami Heat. Uh, I'm trying to think of other things. Sports, uh, I like Vancouver Canucks because i got to represent my province. And no, for anyone who is a Canadian hockey fan, I don't care about the rivalry, the, the, the rivalry between Toronto Maple Leafs and Montreal Canadiens. Oh, crap. I'm going to die. Did I just say that out loud? Maybe we should move on. I'm also asked, how old am I? I didn't know people were actually curious about that. I'm 18, pure and simple. Am I married? And if so, what does your wife think about your channel? <laughs> nope, I'm not married. Um, <laughs> I don't think anyone would be willing to <laughs> commit themselves to this thing right here. I'm gross. <laughs> and if my wife th had like thoughts about my channel, um. She'd probably go, like, downstairs, like, in my room, and probably say, like, Get away from that microphone and do something with your life! You're standing by there all day and you never pay attention to me! Because that's what the rest of my family does to me. <laughs> um. Ooh. And here we go. I think this is the last question here. Yeah, no, and this is actually a perfect question to end up on. Anonymous user from Tumblr simply asks, what are your future plans for your channel? Well, I'm going to finish off Halloween here. Like, that's my main goal here, to survive through the Halloween special. Yes, I am doing another one. 
And for future plans, um, I'm going to focus more on quality and not, excuse me, quantity. Because, I don't know, I feel like I've been running in a bit of a, a, a rut as of late. And my goal is to, you know, make quality content. So I'm probably going to maybe post like one... Ugh, jeez, I can't stop. I keep hiccuping. <gasps> Ugh, this is the final question. Get my body together. I want... Where was I? Yes, uh, I'm probably going to post maybe one video a week from... Maybe. I'm just going to still think about that. Where I'm going to focus more on realities of horror. Because that's such a... That's a good series, I think, is better. I'm going to focus on longer stories. And I'm not just going to do creepypasta anymore. I want to read actual stories. That's why, you know, Dr. Moxmo Readings is my username. And why I didn't go with, like... Dr. Creepy or Dr. Pasta or something because I wanted to tell stories that weren't just creepy pasta. And also, you know what? I'm going to put this out there. Let me know if you guys bite. I was thinking about reviewing movies. I was just talking about how I like talking about movies and everything. So I'm going to think about posting some movie reviews because, girl, I got a lot to say. And I'm also looking at some equipment upgrades. You're maybe going to see some audio quality go up and hopefully some editing. I need to learn how to do like how to edit videos better. I'm going to try and buy a new editing program. I've been using Movie Maker since I started, but I'm going to try and get like Adobe Premiere or Sony Vegas, depending on what I can learn. But you'll see in the near future. And that's it. Wow. We finally got it done. And how long did it take me? 37 minutes. Okay. I'm not going to g g continue anymore. We got a lot to cover here. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. This was actually kind of fun. And also, leave in the comments if maybe you want me to do another Q&A. Like, maybe I could do an annual Q&A from here on out. But only if you want it. But this was really fun. So, thank you. So, feel free to leave a comment with what you want. Let me know what you think about me reviewing movies. And also, get ready for Halloween. Because that is actually just right around the corner and I'm going to have a lot of horror related content coming out. And also, thank you so much for the 300 subscribers. We've done so much and also, I hope this subscriber special was great. Three parters. I had an actual blast doing this. And yeah, that's it. I'm bad at conclusions too when I'm not on microphone. So I think I'm just going to leave the things right here. You know what? Go enjoy the rest of your day. Go tell someone they're fabulous. Go tell yourself you're fabulous and understand that you are beautiful. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. See you next week.